Welcome back to the course. We'll be going over prototyping today and learning why it's so important to do in our game dev journey. I swear this is going to be the last video that's kind of just mostly talking. Next video we'll be jumping into creating things, so don't leave just yet. Knowing how to prototype things quickly and efficiently is an extremely useful skill to have, and I'm going to explain why. I've seen this a lot in projects before, including my own. A dev, or me, will just jump straight into their main project because of all of that excitement around that idea. Then they burn three to four months and realize it's either not what they wanted or it's just missing that one crucial things or thing games can't miss. Fun. That tends to lead into the feeling of being demoralized and then eventually quitting. Now why is that? Why is it that the game that gets created feels kind of empty or just seems to lack a soul even though on paper it sounds amazing? This is what prototyping tends to actually help with. It lets you get the concept out quickly, test it and see what needs to be changed, or if it's what you expected in general. Truth is, there are so many great ideas and concepts out there that end up falling flat, but with some tweaking, planning, and adjustments, they either evolve into something amazing or just feel more fleshed out and fun. That's the overall benefit from learning how to prototype. What about the smaller benefits? Well, here's the thing that I enjoy most about prototyping. Learning how to do new things and gaining more knowledge on why certain things do or do not work. I've learned so much about the most minute mechanic all the way up to how to design world generation, like entire world generation, just from prototyping. I remember prototyping out a really simple pickup based inventory system in Godot when I first started out. It was really bad. It barely functioned, was over complex, and did some really weird things with data that I'm pretty sure would disappoint the game dev community and probably get me some jail time. That's until I found out about Signals. Signals flipped my entire design on its head and just made everything click. Now, I put Signals in pretty much everything I do where they can be used, all because I decided to prototype out a little mechanic before I put it into a project. That's one of those things that's changed my kind of entire development process, and it's been really amazing. So let's actually go and look at a prototype vault that I've set up in Obsidian for the game that I want to work on. So this is just the overall concept. It's a very, very small concept. I really wanted to design something that covers quite a few topics, yet is also very, very simple to kind of get into as your first game. So as it says, you play as a little alien in need of coins to pay rent. You must go through levels collecting coins while avoiding, well, either avoiding or defeating the Spike Shroom Gang, which are going to be little spiky mushrooms. If they get close, they'll steal some of your coins. Defeating them, so if you're actually attacking and defeating them, gets you back any of the coins that have been stolen. But it does affect your character via a karma system. Now we'll get into the karma system in a second. So the other parts of this are if you either lose all of your coins or can't collect enough in the given time limit, you lose and you get kicked out. So game over. If you collect enough coins and you win, you then proceed to the next level and you just need to find more coins as the rent climbs. If you collect more than enough coins, however, you keep the remainder and then you get a choice of either upgrading your character or saving them to get you closer to the next rent goal. So I've got this little note here where it says the karma system controls enemy stats, upgrades, or well, upgrades available, rent multiplier, and the player will need to keep that balance depending on the build to keep going. So this kind of leads into this whole idea of giving players the freedom to build certain ways so they can kind of have a more unique run next time or you know, just kind of keep repeating it, keep that replayability going. Now, on paper, this sounds honestly kind of a little bit mediocre, but the core concept here that I want to prototype out is a karma system. Karma systems you've seen in many, many different games, and I've always wanted to know how to do one myself. I've recently started toying around with the idea of one in my primary project, so I wanted to kind of show you how to do that as well. So let's move from our little concept over to the core game loop. So if I go up here into my canvases and I click, these are little flowchart canvases that I've designed before. This is the core game loop, right? This is what you always usually want to design first when you're prototyping. You get your concept and then you design a, a flowchart or just something visual so you can kind of see how things go. So we're going to start off on the right side here, which is the main menu. So the player will start at the main menu. They will click a button in the main menu and it will go into the game. Then, depending on whether they win or lose, something will happen. If they lose, we go to a restart menu or a continue menu, and we can either go back into the game or go back into the main menu. If we go back into the game and we win, we then go into the upgrade section, which will then put us back into the game again after we've picked an upgrade. So it'll be a new level with new upgrades, new powers, new abilities, and then we go back in. Uh, from there, we can repeat the same loop. This by itself is a core game loop. Now, 
for winning, I've added a few extra steps. If you win and you've completed the game, you've completed, I don't know, 10 rooms or 10 levels, and you get to the game completion screen, what's going to happen is the game will do a karma check. It will check the karma system, see if you are a good karma or bad karma, like if you've done a good karma or bad karma run, and then it will pick an ending based off of a karma check. And then, either way, after the ending, you go into the credits and back into the main menu. This just leads, uh, lead, kind of adds a little bit more personality to the game, adding different endings and things like that, and this is a really simple way of doing it. So, with that in mind, let's drill a little deeper into this, right? This, this is kind of what I do and when I, uh, it comes to prototyping. I design a core. The technical core is what we'll get into in a second. But I design a core and then I go, okay, I want to drill into this a little bit more and see how I can design certain things in a visual manner. So up here, I've got a new folder up here for the core mechanic flow. I'm going to click it. And this is, is a little bit more complex than the one that we just looked at. Now up here, there are some uh, little tags that I've put up, which is color coding tags. Anything orange is a UI related thing, blue is a game related thing, and purple is a system or mechanic related thing. So starting on the very left here, which is where we're going to start anyway, we get the main menu. This is mostly going to be primarily UI. And for the prototype, all I want to have is a exit game button and a start game button. Exiting the game, exits the game. Starting the game, however, leads into the core loop of the game. We start at our level. We get to collect coins in a peaceful way, or we get to defeat enemies and collect coins. And then that will go into a win or lose, depending on a timer at the end of the uh, level. And then if we lose, we have to restart the level. But if we win, we can go through, we do a karma check. Now, what is the karma check going to be? Well, let's go down into the karma system. This is the system that I've been designing kind of visually to kind of show what I mean and what I want to do with this. So the karma check will do one or two things. It will add up some points or take away some points depending. And it will check if you are good or bad. If you are good, you're going to get a stat upgrade. So a random stat of it's either going to be a random stat or a stat of choice gets upgraded. And then the, uh, the multiplier that we've designed for rent will also get lowered. And then you'll continue. But if you're bad, you get more enemies or a higher rent multiplier. This is still a decision to be made. And you unlock a new randomized weapon to use. And then you continue. This way, both good and bad have positive and, well, just positive rewards in general. So more enemies slash a higher rent multiplier kind of counteract each other in a certain way, but they do mean that you're going to have more danger in the next run. Whereas a peaceful run, you just get a stat upgrade, lower rent multiplier, kind of like makes it a bit easier, a bit more relaxed. And then new random weapons will just be a fun little thing to test out and will be a feature that we're going to want to add in, you know, multiple games in general. We're going to want to add weapon systems in different games anyway, so it'd be a good thing to learn how to do. Now, after this happens and we go to the continue section, we go up into the upgrade here. So if we go back to our core loop, do a karma check, go into the upgrade and the upgrade menu is going to be really simple. You go into the upgrade menu, you either select an upgrade or you exit, depending on if you want to keep your coins or spend your coins. And then you continue, go back to a new level, rinse, repeat. So that is the overall concept and kind of flowchart for the game that we want to design. This is really, really simple for what it actually is. Getting a prototype together like this really helps. Now, one really cool thing you can do with this is you can take this flowchart and then you can start expanding upon it when you, like after you've built your prototype out, right? You build your prototype, you see how it feels. Does it feel good? Yes. Okay. I'm going to expand upon it. I'm going to add more to it. Maybe a better AI, maybe more features, more levels. Hell, maybe you could turn it into a Metroidvania style game or kind of modify it depending on which way you want to go or and this is the best part about prototyping or the other best part if you don't like this concept you can scrap the things you don't like and then design a new prototype and it just kind of allows you to spend maybe four to five days just figuring something out and if you do like it you stick with it if you don't like it you get rid of it you move on to the next idea it kind of removes a lot of the demoralization and that kind of eventuality of wanting to quit and not really enjoying the process too much and is really genuinely super important on the game dev journey. I've gone through many, many, many prototypes and I've sat there and I went, this sounds really fun on paper. I've then 
did a quick prototype of it, and I've realized I've hated it. It, it. It's just something that happens. Not every idea is going to be an amazing idea. Where I've, there's also been some ideas where I'm like, oh, you know, we'll see about it. I prototype it out, and then I end up really enjoying it, which is actually where the concept for the game that I'm currently working on came from. It was a few different ideas kind of smushed together, and I went, I don't really know if these work together. Started prototyping, realized I loved the idea. And now it's just my next project for maybe a year or more, we'll see. But that's kind of the ideal process, or at least that is the process I go through. I design a concept, I design a core loop for it, going on systems that I want, and then I go and drill down a little bit more and look into these systems. Visual designs like this really help you figure out what you want to do first and what you want to do next. So, you know, for the start, usually I will start from the core loop. I will get the level done, the lose and the win. So if I lose, it restarts the level. If I win, it restarts the level. That way I've got all of this core done. And then I'll add a main menu to get that looping back and forth between uh, winning and losing to go into the main menu and, you know, having the ability to exit. And then I'll start deep diving more into the karma and upgrade check. So I would quite literally, I'm going to disconnect these, design this loop, the main menu, and then I'd get into the karma check stuff. So I would go karma check, upgrades, and then into the level. So I hope that's kind of explained prototyping in a semi-decent way. It does feel a bit rambly going through all of this, but it is a extremely useful and you like good skill to have. You'll save yourself a lot of heartbreak and a lot of time in the future learning how to prototype well. Now, in the next video, we will just jump straight into prototyping a game. We're going to start a coding process and kind of go from there. I know that's kind of more of the fun part than going over all of the uh, more theory. But yeah, uh, for now, I hope you have like enjoyed this and make sure you have a good game dev journey. I will see you in the next video.